Views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL. However, we do encourage you to like and share them on social media and with all your friends and neighbors because if it's happening on the Treasure Coast, you'll hear about it on the St. Sue Ellen Sanders Show. In fact, here she is right now, the host of the show, Sue Ellen Sanders. Welcome, and uh, thanks for joining us today. I'm excited to have Doretha Hare Truesdale here with me. Um, she's been on my show before, and we got to talking about things uh, in the past, and we had a good old time. Uh, Doretha is one of the few highway women, and her husband, uh, her uh, four. Deceased. Deceased husband. Mm -hmm. I'm like, former husband sounds mm -hmm. like he's divorced. Yeah. Deceased husband is Albert Hare, who's one of the original highwaymen. And we also have with us another original highwayman, Al Black. So this is like a twofer. You get to get uh, a glimpse of history and, and, and how it's going to affect us in the future, uh, meeting, of course, the museum in, in today's show. So welcome, Doretha and Al. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, you are really soft, Al. So I'm going to make <laughs> you move move right. You're soft-spoken, that, that quiet, <laughs> introspective thinking that makes you such a great painter. And we have an Al Black painting mm. um, on the wall of our house. And I was so excited about it. And it's kind of ironic that I got it out of the, you sold it from the trunk of your car <laughs> because that's the whole reputation of the highwaymen. Let's talk a little bit about the highwaymen and who they were and what they meant to the Treasure Coast. Al, I'm going to let you kick it off. Well, uh, I was the salesman for the whole group back in the days. Rico here was my boss. <laughs> uh, was, uh, my husband. And they would give me like uh, 10 or 15 paints a day. I would sell them. Yep. And we'd come back and I'd go out at night and sell these paints. And the next morning, some of the other salesmen would be kind of mad at me because <laughs> I'd be on sold to one to where they were going to sell the next day. So you were a great salesperson. Yeah. Roberts, uh, Johnny Daniel, Ellis Butner, George Butner, Roy McLeanor. So did you feel like you were in the presence of greats, or did you just feel like these were your buds that you were selling paintings for? Well. Or was uh, it a combination? That was uh, kind of funny. I liked it selling. <laughs> uh, that was my, uh, right now I can sell some. Yeah. If I go out to the shows and stuff, I know how to sell my paints. Uh-huh. Yeah. But tell them when you were a typewriter sales. Yeah. I uh, worked for uh, Crucitima, and I met these guys out on the road. They were selling the uh, paintings, and uh, they were smoking cigarettes in the offices and stuff, and they had the shirts hanging out. I said, oh, that's not the way you sell them. I said, go in and say good morning. So the guy said, well, I said, uh, I just run two little black boys out of here. I said, I ain't real black. I said, I'm sunburned. <laughs> yeah. uh, I left the door open so I could come back. But he said, wait a minute. So you act like you know what you're doing. So he called his wife and he uh, said, you like these paintings? She said, ooh, I just love them. And he bought all of them. And so them guys felt like I was the best salesman in the world. So Doretha's uh, ex-husband came by and said. Deceased husband. Deceased Never my husband. ex. He yeah, will yeah, always yeah, be my yeah, husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, y'all know how I go with that. My tongue is a little tight. <laughs> I'm kind of like Moses, you know. Like his tongue a little tight. And I don't speak that well. But uh, that's what happened. And after the end, all of them wanted me to sell for them because I could sell them. Because you could do the selling. Yeah. So, uh, Doretha, uh, 
Now, I know you kind of backed into the painting part of it, too. Let's talk a little bit about the the history there. And, and uh, you know, you came down here. You, you weren't born in Florida. No. You came down here. Um, from with, West Virginia. From West place. Virginia. Yeah. And weren't, weren't there a bunch of siblings? And you? Oh, yeah. yes. Uh-huh. Um, 59, we came to Fort Pierce from Glen White, West Virginia. I know nobody has heard of it because now it's uh, just a census recognition. It's like okay. less than 500 people and the population was just that small when I was there also. But uh, we, get, we came here, my sister and brother, older sister and brother were living here and my father killed my mother. So in 59, June of 59, my older sister, who was only 21 at the time, going on 22, came to Glen White, got all of us, seven of us, and brought us back to Florida. Wow. That's how we got here. And, um, and the same month, this was in June, I met this young guy uh, out at Coles Drive-In, if anybody remembers that. 25th Street was a dirt road mm -hmm. it, it, uh, at that time. And we were out there. And uh, the guys uh, wanted, you know, new girl in town, new girls in town. My sister was with me, so everybody <laughs> wanted to go on a date. Yeah. But this guy says to me, which was the strangest thing that no one had ever said anything like that to me, but he, I guess he was just curious. And he asked me, did, uh, at that time, Negroes and white, did you all go to school together? And I said, no, our schools are separate also. And but he, I looked at him, it was like not that much light, but he had the most beautiful eyes. Oh my goodness, his eyes were gorgeous. So I go home and have a dream about him. <laughs> so I asked my cousin, who was that guy? And she said, well, you know that house on, on 13th Street? He built that house. He was, uh, for his mom, he's been in the service. Little and behold, did I know that he was going into the Shall I say it? Eleventh grade. I had finished high school. And he's already built a house for his mom. <laughs> no, it wasn't true. She didn't oh, know what okay. she was All talking right. about. Okay. okay. He had not been in the service. He was still in high school, <laughs> taking art classes from Zenobia Jefferson, and being mentored by uh, Bean Backer. So no, okay. he was nowhere yeah. near. Mm building the house yeah. with his mom okay. at all. Okay. She or, just or didn't know what she was service. talking about. She did, but, no. but now now you're like hooked. You're hooked. <laughs> hey, hey, well, and that was it. Yeah. So here I am. I'm finished high school and I find out I'm dating this guy that's going into junior. He's a junior going into, <laughs> not a senior. <laughs> and I have a job because I got a job at the bus station. <laughs> So I'm a waitress at the bus station on US-1 and Avenue D, and he's in high school. But it worked out well because the being back his house is the block over. Mm -hmm. So I could go down <laughs> to Bees and watch Alfred and Beanie paint it. So that was really, really So is super Albert great. one of the Alfred. first? Yeah, Alfred, Alfred mm -hmm. was one of the first uh, painters that Absolutely. was working with Beanie. Yeah. Oh. And you would go over there and watch him paint. Oh, yeah. I mean, that... T tell me what that... that, that tell was, me what was that well, was like. Was Beanie... Did, was he explaining things while he was working, or did was he just... was? They were just sitting there painting. He would give Alfred a point or two, but Beanie would stand here, Alfred would stand here, and both of them be painting. And, be, and I always thought that... He had a, a like a, a a mason jar, and I thought it was water, mm -hmm. you know. And then I found out later on that it was like rum that he he was beanie or yeah, Alfred. Bean, no, Alfred okay. Was <laughs> he was drinking at that time. Alfred what? Alfred was eighteen because uh, he was late finishing his school because Alfred was he didn't graduate until sixty one. I graduated fifty nine. Wow. Well. So yeah. Well then. Yeah. <laughs> But so despite you being the older, more he, no, that's what I'm getting ready to backtrack yeah. and say. Uh, Alpha was older than me. I was, was 16. I was 16 okay. when he was 18. Oh, so it was just that you were a smarty. <laughs> well, yeah. I think it was. I don't know that I was that smart, but because my mom had so many kids and all of them like 
together. She put me out of the house to go to school with my older sister, and I had to keep up. So, yeah. So yeah. I did, and so I graduated. Early. Yeah. Yeah. But it was too many little, too many little children at the house, so she, she put me out there. Yeah. And uh, I kept up. So, and uh, was it Al? Was it Beanie's house that you were going by uh, to pick up the paintings, or <clears throat> was it? Uh, whose house did you go pick up the paintings and when did I, you start selling the paintings I was in in 67 I think it was okay so we're talking a little bit farther along mm -hmm. the road then yes uh, I uh, would uh, come around and sit around and uh, just Alpha get through with some of the paintings sometimes I'd sell them time he gave them to me I'd go sell them I could <laughs> sell some it could. Did did you ever have like wet fingerprints on those paintings because they weren't dry yet? Yes, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, that's how you learn to paint. Yeah. fix it, repairing the paintings yeah. when he would yeah. take so, them so, out. Yeah. yeah, how did you how how did you change from uh, being the salesperson to being the painter? Well, uh, I learned how to paint by uh, fixing the paintings when they get scarred and smirched. From people's uh, fingerprints because you picked them up when they were wet. Yeah, and sometimes <laughs> when you'll be uh, carrying them around with those many paintings, you'll get scarred. Uh -huh. So you, I would take and I'd always carry me a little brush with me if they were real wet, uh -huh. and then I'd just smooth it out. Right. But sometimes I would take my finger and fix it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So did you knew, know that this was something that you enjoyed and that you were good at right away? No. Uh, I know there was some money in it. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, we always was. I always wanted to uh, keep me a dollar or two in my pocket. So I, you know, this art. Yeah. Back then, it was, it was nice, good, good art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was sell. I know what colors right now to put on a painting to make it sell <laughs> because yeah. I sold enough of them, you know. I know I, I sold enough in my lifetime to know what people want in their house. Yeah, we, we were doing good uh, until we hired Al. But when we hired Al, we started doing great because yeah. Al was selling a lot of painters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and you you had to speed up the work, yeah. and so there were more. So who were the original highwaymen? Who were the ones that first started training with, with Beanie and yeah. started painting the paintings? Didn't nobody start with me but Alfred. That's it. Okay. Uh, Backus, the only one That's uh, right. taught. Uh, the only somebody he taught was Alfred. Mm -hmm. The mother guys. Alfred talk. Okay, now, okay, Harold so it was Newton, second hand. Yeah. yeah. Harold Newton was painting Pain. right now. That's right. And Roy That's McLennan was painting right. right then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But. Uh, so yeah. Alfred was like the king of the highwaymen. Alfred. Alfred and Harold Newton yeah. were the king. Okay. Well, we, we, we had a house, so okay. everybody could come to our house. We had the house where I am now, but in the backyard. Before we built our studio back there, everybody was still coming to the house. And Alpha was so inclusive. Alpha loved to cook. So Alpha would have, we'll have like crab boils out back. So naturally, when you have food flowing and beer and stuff, you get a lot of people at your house. Right. So uh, we, a lot of people came by. Mm -hmm. All the time, and it was sort of like at Bean's place. I would say open house because mm -hmm. people come to the house all the time. So we always had people in and out, in and out. But uh, just like Al uh, said in the beginning, um, a lot of the people that's part of the twenty six were not painting at the time that uh, Al. Alfred and, and Harold was painting. They and Alfred just brought them on because everybody saw Alfred with <laughs> large sums of money. So everybody wanted to be a part of this yes. because they saw the money that they were were making. Yeah. And the cars and everything. So everybody around the neighborhoods wanted to sell or paint. And there were there were some parts of the paintings that could be more of an assembly line like the framing part well we and everything was like homegrown because we built the frames right at the house right 
and after he had his saw and saw and and I had sisters, so we had uh, guys that would come over thinking they were dating my sisters, mm -hmm. and they were learning how to make frames because they were. You put them to work, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get a chance to date unless you learn how to make frames. Yeah. So, so we had a lot of people making frames, and 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 then uh, the Upson board that we were painted on would buy from uh, East Coast Lumber up here on. Um, Orange, not that's not orange. That's Avenue A. Yeah, Avenue yeah. A, uh, Bine, uh, so, 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 so you yes. know, Al, Al was, Alfred was cooking these meals, oh, and yeah. more people were coming over, and everybody was was eating and laughing, and having fun and drinking, and either at. Beer. Either building frames yeah. or they were learning to paint. Yes. So uh, take us back a little bit uh, as far as, you know, the, when, when people started gathering. What, was it, you know, t today when you think of like a paint party, you think of, you know, there's these groups that go around and they get mostly a bunch of women mm -hmm. that sit around <laughs> and they pay money and they all paint the same painting. <laughs> it's kind of like we didn't do that. And that's 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 the way they do it now. But exactly. back then, I mean, were they painting from photographs? Were they painting to, were a lot of the paintings in your backyard? Did people go out? Did they go I mean because there's paintings from all, all over. Do, yeah. So h how did they do that? Well, it's mostly scenes, Florida scenes that you see. Right. That uh, they would just paint. But um, Are a lot of those trees in your backyard, though? Well, uh, <laughs> excuse me, but uh, those paintings, yeah. they, they was painted Florida landscapes. Uh-huh. And they all was different, and everybody painted their own paintings. That's uh, right. Like they yep. painted their that, own that's paintings. That's what I was getting ready to say. Uh, they didn't do a, uh, you might paint this painting here, you might paint a number, but if you notice those paintings, they'll never be the same. Mm -mm. Right, okay. There'll be a difference in those yeah. paintings. So can you all tell by looking at a painting without looking at the signature whose painting it is? I can tell you, you can put mm -hmm. it way out under somewhere. I don't even have to look at the yeah. signature, and I can tell you anybody yeah. who painted. Who's, who's painting? I, and people come now and say, uh, who painted this painting? And they'll give me a hundred dollars to tell yep. them because I know it's then they won't know, but I know. Who but you it. know, yeah. yeah, I know exactly. You, you know, I sold for everybody. so yeah. so everybody had their own style. Right. Did people sketch before they painted, or did they just paint from their head? All right, some artists just sketch. I never made a sketch on a board. No. No. But I Alfred did. Hey, well. <laughs> Alpha would outline mm -hmm. in his sketch. He, yeah, outlined. he, he would yeah. outline, do his outline. He would outline, but he didn't sketch. But when I was. It's a different than a sketch on an outline. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So no. I guess there's like three different levels. Yeah. There's the go straight to paint. Yeah. There's the outline, and then there's the yeah. sketch. Right? Well, he would have in, in his, he would put in there just what he, he wanted because when I would paint his yeah, his, his, his background, yeah, right. that's yeah. what he would do. Right. And he would yeah. he would mix the paint and he would have it, and I call it sketched out there, the scene that he was going to put in. And then I would uh, paint the background for him. And so then my you brother, would do the, the, the background uh -huh. and so you were the paint mixer as far as... No, he mixed the paint. Oh, I, he mixed he, the he paint? Mixed it. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, most of the backgrounds are not just one color. No. They're multicolored. Uh -huh. I mean, he would have it right there mixing with And he'd color. tell you, okay, mm -hmm. all right. What he wanted in the, in that okay. section. Okay. And my brother, when my younger brother came to live with us, Carnell, who was a highwayman, uh, he started uh, helping paint, too, because we, we, we were painting 10, 20-some paintings a day because... We had salespeople that had to go out and sell. What would you say, how many of them were painting just to make money, and how many of them were painting because they had a love of art? Was it mostly the love of art? 
No, it's mostly <laughs> having to make a living. You, okay. you can love art, but you got to eat. You got yeah. to pay rent. Yeah, okay. And, you know, we love the art, too, but we also had to pay for pay for our house. We had children we had to take care of, yeah. and then we always helped our families, too. So, yeah, you love it, but you have to eat. All right. Well, back back then, they had tomatoes fields. Uh, you would have to get up in the morning at three o'clock and hit the bus to go to close to Devil's Garden. Uh huh. And you were not getting but five dollars a day. And you would go out and pick the All tomatoes. Tomatoes, and you didn't get back home to that night. Right. And and. and Everybody would pay. So he was better than uh, making five dollars a day. So it was, the women were getting five dollars a day, and the men were getting seven dollars a day. And uh, the guy what I was living with, named Fiona Snow, he took and had me driving the truck, hauling tomatoes back from there. I'd haul three loads of tomatoes back. Right. It from Devil's Garden. I go up in the morning at three o'clock and go pick up the load what they left on the ground. And then, and then, you would come back and sell the paintings. Yeah. Well. So I or quit, would, oh, you quit, I quit that one? I quit okay. That. You didn't have quit to do that. that. Yes, first. I didn't okay. have to do that no more. Mm-hmm. I, okay. I made uh, pretty good money because they would tell me what they wanted for the paintings. And then I would have to bring them what they tell me. They okay, and that was that was good. That was one of my other mm-hmm. questions: is who set the price on the paintings? So they, the artists. Yeah, the artists would tell you tell what you got one. to bring him back. Right. And then did you, you ever bring, bring back more? Uh, did every you ever once get? In a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, when I hit a big leak or something other, I would say, "Huh." But he, but we men, Alfred was so good of friends to. Yeah. Uh, he would give me some money if I go make a. Yeah. Good lick. He was yeah. Just, me, Alpha yeah, was, was a good, nicer good person. person too. Yeah. He was yeah. the nicest person I ever met yep. in the uh, art field. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So 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 here's a there's a little bit about the history of the fire of the uh, Highway highwaymen, <laughs> and uh, there's a whole lot to tell, and that's why it's so exciting that. Uh, the Highwaymen Museum is coming to Fort Pierce, and actually, you're already open, or you had the grand opening we, for we, it. We had what we call the first look. First look, yeah, for uh, uh, patrons to see what it, what is going to be or what it can be. And for the Highwaymen Festival, we open it again for the uh, Highwaymen tour. So. Right. Uh, people would know where the museum was. And we had paintings in there on the lower floor that that day on uh, February the 18th we did. And what do you foresee in the future when it's open for good and every day? What's it gonna be? Well, upstairs, it's a two-story building that uh, we leased from the city. Upstairs, we plan to have a a permanent collection of uh, highwaymen paintings, and downstairs is like our multifaceted room. So we will have maybe different exhibitions downstairs, mm-hmm. uh, maybe some painting classes, uh, because we want to work with the younger people also. And, so. and that's awesome to be able to give back and create the next generation of because you know there's already the original highwaymen and then there's kind of the second Second generation generation, of highwaymen which includes uh um we were talking before the show started uh about crystal barker king and she was saying that she got a highwayman painting that was from from al's nephew nephew, michael yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. um and uh then beyond that, you can continue to create uh, generations of of highwaymen. So it's always something that is part and parcel of the history of Fort Pierce and of the Treasure Coast. Um, and you know, beyond Florida, even there are people who collect highwaymen paintings way beyond Florida. So it's not just a local uh, collection. Uh, but if you do live in Florida, 
you have the opportunity to uh, get a piece of original highwayman work on your car. So I'll let you guys tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, the highwayman tag. Let's the, get a little the closer. The state of, 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 of Florida authorized the highwayman tag, but we have to sell 3,000 pre-sale vouchers before the state will produce the tag. And we'll, I don't even know if we're at 10% now. And this, we have to get it done before October of 2023. So all of the listeners, you know, that can hear us, please, you can go to our website, um, Original Florida Hall of Fame Highwayman.org. And on that website, you can order your pre-sale voucher is $35.50. $33 will go towards the actual uh, plate when the state produces. So you will only lose $2.50, which is the processing fee for your credit card. But really, we need this so much because the highwayman deserves to have the plate. And you deserve to have a piece of Florida art on your vehicle. So please please purchase it and and i'll tell you up front that i like i had purchased one already last year when you were first selling it and i went to buy one for my husband in the way that you have to go online you have to have the tag number so if you're planning on buying them for the family have the cars in the parking lot so you, or write down the the tag. license tag <laughs> number you can also purchase them by going through the tax collector's yeah, office too and there's a drop down menu where you can select what uh specialty tag you want and keep in mind that these specialty tags will only start to be created once you sell 3,000 of them so how how long in the future are we looking at say you sell 3,000 of them by October and we hope that to be true and by December you can start purchasing the actual so tag. it's that quick yeah, so it's that yeah, quick that's that quick of a turnaround that they are, they are produced the tag if uh, if it's purchased and the proceeds from the tag go to uh, it goes to the city of Fort Pierce but they in turn will give us funds to operate the museum so it's going to be earmarked That's for it. the museum operations and for the St. Lucie County um, Education Association uh, I think like 15 10 or 15 percent of the funds go to them also. the Education Foundation uh -huh. that's of awesome County, yeah yes. yeah so so you'll be supporting both education right. and the highwaymen history um, and like I said you got a piece of the original highwaymen art um, on your car and the art that that is created by that first original yes. highwaymen um, Alfred Hare absolutely and uh, you know we, we talked about you know it, there there's been there's a been highwaymen and highway women and Doretha you are one of the highway women because you just started painting with Alfred. With, with Alfred. I am not in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> no. So let's talk about, I mean, there's there's Highwaymen books out there, too. There's picture books. I know uh, Camille Yates uh, wrote the copy for a photo book that uh, somebody had, had written a, a few years ago. Maybe maybe 10 years ago. I don't know. All the, the years just start to combine together. Uh, but uh, we try ha we've tried our hardest to put into history um, the meaning of the highwaymen and the culture and how it changed the shape of art really mm -hmm. um, so part of that is is going to be highlighted from the museum and then you know you actually can learn about the highwaymen too in some of your florida history books oh yes um, so where do you hope to go from here on it? I mean, how do you look to, co to continue the legacy? Um, Al, are you just going to continue selling paintings out of your car? 
Well, <laughs> I don't have to go out and sell them no more. <laughs> People come to you, yeah, right? <laughs> they come to me now. Uh, I used to. Uh, I can't keep no paintings. Matter of yeah. fact, I don't have any yeah. paintings right now. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, the guy came about every painting I had last night. Wow! Wow! And I'm 138 behind. <laughs> oh no! I, th- I thought you were starting to say you were 138. <laughs> Wait yeah, a minute! You don't look quite that old. <laughs> yeah, that's how many I'm behind right now. So that means you got to find them somewhere yeah. or paint them. You got to yeah, paint them. Yeah, I got em. to paint them. Uh, I went and got me enough material and stuff to do them. So you're good. Yeah. I'm good. I got to go to Pompano tomorrow and pick up your a frames. frames so. Do you still make your own frames? No, I don't make them. I don't have time to make yeah, them. Yeah, no I was wondering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, a lot of the sales from the original Highway Men paintings and then even continuing, um, you sold to businesses. Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about that? Well, I would go sometime. I would leave most of the time was my stomping ground with St. Cloud and Orlando and Kissimmee and stuff. But I would go down to Key West, Key Big Pine, Key Marathon, all down in there and sell mm-hmm. these paintings. I would go down like, uh, sometime I would go down that morning for a day and I'd stay down there to that evening coming back this way. That's how I sold those paintings. I sold them to motels, attorney offices, doctor's offices, and just about anybody would buy those paintings. Furniture stores. Yeah, Yeah. furniture stores. Mm -hmm. Well, were the furniture stores reselling them then when they sold their furniture? Yeah, well, most of them, the people who would be in the furniture stores, they know the different in that print that they had yeah. in the furniture store yeah. than a painting. See, a painting is different from a print. Yes, yeah. yeah. If some people won't buy a print. Right, some they people want the painting. And yeah, then the what's a G-clay compared to a, a, a painting? That's like a more advanced print? Well, G-clay is only a, a print on canvas, that's, that's all. So it's, but, but they charge more for it. Oh yeah. Yeah, the uh, canvas is expensive. Okay. Yeah, so it's but a it's print, still but it's a print. Canvas. It's still a print, okay. but it's on canvas and not on on paper. Yeah. Yeah. So. But. Uh, I I I think I've told you this before. I don't remember if it's been on was on the air or not. But um, one of the first times I ha- had a house of my own. Um, with my husband and went to the Bacchus Art Festival and was walking around there and I was saying, well, you know, my couch is like green with pink on it and had pink walls and the artists there were like looking at me going, you do not buy (laughs) art to match your furniture. You do not do that. That is not what art is about. Um, and, uh, And I learned that you know you know maybe obviously you don't want it to contrast you don't want a room full of a certain color furniture and then you have completely a different color but there are a lot of people who actually buy their furniture now to match their art that's it absolutely <laughs> because they want that connection yeah. because I, I i have one commission and uh she wants like purple uh, and and you and I both like purple a lot. <laughs> she, wants it. she wants her sky purple, so that's, <laughs> that's what it will be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Doretha, I'm used to seeing you and your bright, vivid colors, and I like the bright colors, too. And, you know, I'd like to think that I have the soul of an artist, even though I can't paint. Um, but, Al, you're, you're kind of, like, in more conservative colors how do you are your are you you get all your colors out on the canvas well uh by me being this uh, was the salesman and all with them many years Mm -hmm. sales i know just about what people will buy for yeah see if they 
But at first, I know that's the colors that they. That's look what they're and looking that's for. What everybody wear. Yeah. And so that's what I feed off of now. That's yeah. What I, I try to paint some. I come out with some colors sometimes. People <laughs> they'll say, uh, "That's the color I want right there." <laughs> Can you do me in many this many? So that's what I sell my paint. How many living? Uh, highwaymen or second generation or ancestors who paint of highwaymen would you say there are painting today? Well, a few years back when we was introduced into the Artist Hall of Fame, right? It was twenty six, mm -hmm. and after those twenty six, and they seen that we had went into the Artist Hall of Fame. And now it's 2,600. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but they not, you know, all of them have, but they went on, you know, when they went that, when we came out in the Artist Hall of Fame, they wanted to get on the van way. Right, of course, yeah, that. yeah. And so I feel like there ain't nothing wrong with it because uh, there's enough money out here for everybody. Yes. So you got to be able enough to, to paint enough to get it you know what I mean uh, is most of the highway or is all of the highway men art painted on the Treasure Coast because you were saying you were selling in the Keys and uh, Orlando and some other areas too do um, any of the highway men art uh, depict any other locations in Florida as well oh all over Florida. Oh, so all over. Yeah, I went all over Florida. I, I used to go to Savannah, Georgia and sell paintings. <laughs> I used to go to Jackson, Mississippi, uh, Tuskegee, Alabama. I got a paintings all up and down that road. Okay, so you sold paintings there, but were any of the paintings of of those areas other than, you know, did were there paintings that were uh, painted in Georgia and in uh no so, no we it's all it was florida. all florida landscapes mm, okay and that's why uh they went into you know the florida art folk, folk art that's yes what it is. so that's it's folk art yes yeah, so that's art. the category of yeah. the art uh, and did the artists have like i know we see a lot of the poinciana trees we see a lot of um uh, a lot of seascapes uh, of the like you said they're all landscapes nature drawings what are the other cypress yeah cypress, cypress swamp trees. scenes and swamp that's the that's the Sunset stuff with the, scenes, scenes, with the spanish sun, moss coming moss down right scene. yes it's got all different kind of florida scenery yes you got ocean scenes you got real ma you got the poinciana you got the jacaranda you have the rain tree you you have cypress and butler would paint uh, deer and yeah. walker they would paint yeah yeah, yeah and then there, some of them that's what you call wildlife mm -hmm. so yeah, that, yeah. so you, uh, along with the landscapes they had the wildlife, yeah, the wildlife in it too in it. but yeah. florida, florida nature is yeah. mm -hmm. florida has the scenery is, is amazing. Well, it see, is. it's the difference in it because uh, sometime now uh, I be calling myself painting a deer. He looked like a turtle. <laughs> uh, a cow. Uh, yeah, a cow or something. Else. You know what I mean? So my hands are not as sharp as they used to be. No. But I'd have painted some. I got some uh, books and stuff where I have, uh, you know, painted some animals in um, as far as the, you know, the landscapes here, I, I think the Treasure Coast is fairly unique in that we have the ocean landscapes on one end, and then you have like the Adams Ranch and the ranch Inland, scenes yeah. on the That's other end. That's what you call a backwood marsh scene. Mm -hmm. Okay. In backwoods. Yeah. Um, and there's not a whole lot of areas where you can get from one to the other in a half hour. Exactly. So, I mean, we're like the paradise of painters. We are. Yeah. <laughs> the scenery. Do you, do you think that helped uh, grow the highwaymen and their art, the fact that there was so much beauty around us? Well, this is what I believe. I believe that this highwayman uh, art, it took over all the art out there. The mm -hmm. highwayman paintings took over because 
It was good art. And mm-hmm. colorful. And colorful. Yes. And that's what yeah. the people were wanting. It, it attracted right. people. At that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now we can't. See, we used to, couldn't sell our paintings in the galleries and all. But now, you every gallery in the world wants them. Yeah. Because they sell. Some of the same paintings I sold for 25 and $15, I've seen them sell for <laughs> 45000 Wow, how does yeah. that make you feel? It make me feel real good. <laughs> <laughs> it make me feel real good. And I wish I could have got it then. <laughs> yeah, but, I but you know you what, I, what I say to people, uh, money then, $100 a day was a lot of money to me. Yeah. At that time, because we were able to buy a house. We had cars mm-hmm. and just on the art. Yes. Had four or five cars. <laughs> so was it like shocking to you that you were able to support yourself through art, through something that you really loved? It, it really wasn't because it was something that Alfred was determined to do. Mm-hmm. So, because he, he tried college for a half a semester and that was it. He was gone. He, he was, this was how he was going to make his living, and that's that's how he did it. Well, if I remember, didn't he follow you up to FAMU? He did. Yeah. <laughs> and tried to sell his art there, but it didn't work. He had to bring it, paint up there. We had a tree in the backyard. So he would paint and then put us in the car and drive it back. Drive down. it back here to, yeah, to sell. Down south, yeah, yeah, because Tallahassee was not that welcome at that time for yeah. in the 60s for the, that, uh, that type kind of, of art. art. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was a little different. Yeah. So um, after you went up there and he followed you up there and painted the scenes in the backyard and brought him back down here to sell, then you came back here to live for good. Yes. We actually, and I always say we interned, but I interned in Eatonville. He, he was with me. And, uh, and we thought about staying in Eatonville because that was a nice, cool little old town. And then we ended up back uh, January of 64. We got an apartment on, um, what was that? Uh, Avenue E and 11th Street, I think it was, where it was a tree he could paint across the street there. And then in I, Alpha, we had a super sport car. Alpha goes and gets a Cadillac. And I'm saying, here it is, the stop sign is leaning up against this one bedroom apartment. Mm-hmm. And you go, and buy a, Spend a cat, the money a on the Cadillac. Cadillac you know? <laughs> that did not sit well. So in October of 65, in fact, October the 16th, we moved into our house on Dunbar Street. You did. So you yeah. had a house, and yes. and you said, uh, you know, Alfred liked to entertain, and yeah. then that's how the whole group painting thing got Get started. To the house. Yeah, um, everybody. And uh, it's great that it's continuing and you know in today's world you just don't have a whole lot of people stopping by people's house for um crab boils or art or getting together or anything and so you kind of have conceived of the highway men museum in the community room as a I meeting up place of art artists and also future artists. Absolutely, to and, continue it. And I know that um, Cliff in our class also had a Zenobia, not in our class, in his class had a Zenobia Washington as, uh, as Jefferson, his, Jefferson, Jefferson, Zenobia Jefferson, okay, uh-huh. as, as his, his teacher. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, you know, there will be teachers in the St. Lucie County schools and beyond St. Lucie County that will bring their classes to the Highwaymen Museum and check out the history that's going on there. Uh, the history, the, the future of the artists, and then also how the idea the the whole concept of the highwaymen is something beyond the art. Exactly, community based. Community so based. it's it you know it makes people realize how how talent like that isn't not isn't necessarily something you're born with, but it could be something that you grow. It, it, absolutely, have a, have a passion for it, the love of. 
or in in Al's case, a passion for selling, <laughs> and then having, you know, s starting to, you know, now that you don't sell 100% of the time anymore, uh, you have the time to paint and create. Um, kind of, it's kind of like immersion. Yes. With yes. the art, like you, it was all around you. And I just picture you all shopping for a house, or any of the highwaymen shopping for a house, looking around, not at the inside of the house, but at the trees <laughs> in the backyard or in the front yard or next door that are trees that you can paint. Paint on, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you tack your board up and, and paint. Yeah. yeah. Until we built the studio, it really it, it changes your whole concept of of home ownership when you think about buying a house for the outside, yeah. <laughs> no, just for the inside. Well, that's Al just Al bought his six cell about the house you just bought out. Let's hear about well, it. Well, uh, I uh, I lived in an apartment for um, seventeen years. And I was like paying eight hundred dollars when the wind ups they wanted to get sixteen hundred. Oh yeah. And so I said, Well I didn't do that, I can well, if I can do that, uh, you know, I can buy me a house. <laughs> yeah. So you did you find you a house with a lot of good trees in the backyard? Oh no, I don't well, have to get in the tree no more. I got, got me a I got me a little studio off oh, from the house. I, I okay. took the garage, it was off from the house, and I made it into, into a whole studio. studio. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. I was yeah. out in the yard painting out when I got there, <laughs> and all of a sudden, uh, a tree was hanging, a big limb fell down and split the chair wide open. Mm. I said, you know, wow. the right side me. And I said, I'll never go out here to paint no more. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. That's it. Uh, uh, so the, the whole idea of landscape art is a whole category of, of art, too. Do you see um, the highwaymen growing at any point? You know, you did nature art, too. The next generation of highwaymen and women um, what do you see them doing? More of the same, or do you see things changing a little bit for them? Get a little bit closer there. Well, I feel like that his we gonna we gonna die, <laughs> and that second generation is gonna benefit the second generation more than it is us. Now that's the way I feel about it, but that's a good thing. Because somebody had to teach us, and they paint the same thing that we painted. Okay. Over. So I feel like that that keep on the legacy. It will continue. Yeah, it's going to keep so, on. So they're going to continue doing the same type of things. Uh, you think painting, it, paint is in your blood? I mean, is it is like the kids that you raise, the kids that you're around, and your kids aren't, so young anymore and they may have grandkids and mm, great great grands paint yeah, yeah they and do. do they all paint mm -hmm. so it's like and, and they love it do they to <laughs> say so if do. you're born in this family <laughs> you pick up a paintbrush is, is there anybody who's just said no granny i am not painting i don't want to do it well some some of them don't but uh uh like i say most of them do most of them just i guess Read, because they read about it a lot. And yeah. They, it's, it's, I have one great that's, I think she's 10, and uh, she'll see me and she says, well, I want to I wanna paint. And, and they come down here, they actually live in Maryland, but they come down here and paint and everything. Yeah. And they're painting the trees in your uh, yeah, yard and across yeah. the street. And they love it. And, uh, you know, that's something that you can carry on to the next generation and to feel like you know that's something that's important to you and part of your history um, and you know there's other parts of creating too that members of the family could do but we just have a couple more minutes but I just you know we touched slightly at the beginning about you know the fact that um, 
you know, Al, you're talking about when you went knocking on doors to begin with as a salesperson because of the fact that your skin was black, people weren't as welcoming to you. How do you see the turnaround now? I mean, do, do you? I have went to Obechobe and said, uh, people said, I kicked holes through some of the pains. Said, get out of here. And sometimes I'd run. I have left some pains in the office and went back and run the to next for day. Yeah. yeah, went back the next day and I said, I saw you was uh, had a bad day and everything. I said, I thought maybe I'd come back. He said, Oh, yes, I uh, was having a bad day and I have sold him plenty of pain since then. Do you think you created a culture where people were more accepting of black men and women? as artists as part of the art scene yes and some of them some some of the people they would run you out the office but some people would feel they would have passion and let you come in and see what you had because the paintings was eye catching you mm -hmm. if you know, somebody would look at those paintings out they were going to get it because they liked it you know they had good color in them and right now they're selling for big money so, Doretha, how do you see the, the change from when, you know, you all started selling to uh, painting and selling? Do you feel like you all are getting, and I don't mean you all, uh, I mean all of the highwaymen as artists are getting more respect as art? Absolutely. More respect, more uh, acceptance. People love the highwaymen. It's, it's no it's no greater fact than that. And they want to be with the, in the presence of a highwayman. When we had the festival, the, uh, they would come back and tell me, I was able to see a highwayman. That was the highlight. Yeah. They saw the paintings, but Mr. Reagan was there. He didn't participate in the festival, but he came to the museum. And the people were so thrilled to see them. And, to and, see him, and yes. that's it's great to see, and we're so glad that you're a part of the history. We just got another minute left, um, and I just want to remind everybody that the Highwaymen Museum is going to be opening up sometime real soon. You have a lot of opportunities to get in there when there's different a Highwayman Festival and so, but you can buy a piece of that art now on your license um, by going to. Uh, the original Florida, Florida Highway. Highwayman.org. Okay. Uh, Al Black and Doretha Hare Truesdale have been my guests. You've been listening to the Sue Ellen Sanders Show. We'll see you next week with more. The Sue Ellen Sanders Show. Weekends in the early morning hours on WPSL, Port St. Lucie. And archives on YouTube. WPSLTV.com and binge watches some Sue Ellen Sanders shows.